What's up? What it is? <laughs> we out here. It's early. It's six ninety nine in the morning. Six ninety nine. Ah, bittersweet on those mornings where you have to wake up so early to do such fun things. Once again, we are back, Team Red Rum, spearfishing. This time we are lobstering in the waters around Key West for lobster mini season. Now, I just want to go ahead and apologize. It's been a few weeks since our last upload. Hopefully, we can make up to you with this video. This rock is stacked up with lobster, as so are many others. So you get to watch us go ahead and tickle them out and bring them home for dinner. So as you can see, we are in fairly shallow water here. I would say we're in no deeper than 10 feet. Sometimes these rocks can be stacked in a little bit more shallower water, these ledges. But in this spot, we're about 10 foot. You can see I've got my beautiful mermaid girlfriend there. It's a beautiful morning. It actually was not so the day before, and it was extremely windy. It was a big question mark if it was even going to be visible to get lobster on this morning, but as so many mini seasons are, the water was good enough. So we decided to load up and head on out. As you can see, we're already putting lobster in the net. Nice. We've got two groups of us. You can see that we are signified by two different dive flag buoys. We like for safety purposes to keep a dive flag and buoy attached to our lobster net, um, you know, the lobster bag. That way people know there are divers underneath and around that bag. And then we of course also fly the dive flag from our boat. So we kind of triangulate the position, declare our little set area and go to work. So a few of you might be curious as to what I just put into my net and that is what is called a spider crab. Spider crabs are found pretty much anywhere in southern Florida, on the Gulf of Mexico side and on the Atlantic, and they inhabit the same areas where lobsters can be found. And I will tell you what, they are very underrated, extremely delicious. Often their meat is much better than stone crab, even though those are really hard to beat. But between getting some lobsters and getting ourselves some spider crabs, we have a heck of a feast ahead of us. So we've got a few in our lobster bag, we're shoving them in tail first, so that way if they try to kick away, they only kick themselves harder into the bag. You can see we're diving with our dive lights. It was, uh, you know, twilight whenever we were first getting down there, so um, the sunlight wasn't totally out illuminating the area, so we were diving with the lights, and they're coming in handy right now as well as we're looking into this deep ledge. This thing just seems to have endless amounts of lobster coming out. As you can see, we are working this ledge as a team. I just pulled one out. Now she's going down, tickling this one, puts him in the net, opts for the grab him in the net technique, also very effective, and boom, two more down. Sometimes these guys can be pretty stubborn and you just have to drop the net on them aggressively. I like slotting that tickle stick across the net and secluding the lobster to the corner of the net so they can't kick any further. So there we go, shoving a couple more in the bag and we are still on the hunt. I just want to remind you that if you guys appreciate these videos and you enjoy them, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and go ahead and share these with a friend and let them know about our channel. We also make all types of aquatic apparel, including rash guards, wetsuits, 
board shorts, shirts, hats, and more. It's all the clothing that we're wearing in the video, including her crop top and my rash guard. You can find them online at redrumintl.com. So we are measuring all of these lobster in the state of Florida. The legal size is a three inch carpus, which is pretty much the head. There is an area in between the two horns that are on that head that that gauge has to nestle uh, in between. And then the lobster carpus must be longer than the gauge so it does not fit and then they are good. If you have been lobstering for some time, quite a few years like myself, you will actually be able to tell which ones are legal size just by looking at them and then therefore you won't waste any time tickling out any smaller lobster and disturbing their nest. That's not something you really like to do. You like to keep these things comfortable. That way if you don't get them this time because they look too small, you can always come back. But as a legal reminder, even though you might know what size they are, it is necessary to keep a lobster measuring device on you at all times. She got a little frustrated there. Obviously this lobster's being a little stubborn and he's playing hard to get. I can see one way back there in the deep and there's nowhere for him to go. So you can reach in there sometimes and grab these things. You want to watch out for eels and sea urchins because they can make you have a really bad day. And when you do grab the lobster like I did, you don't want to grab by the antennas. You want to grab them by what's called the knuckles. And the antennas come out of the knuckles. The antennas can pop off. That's what they're meant to do. The knuckles do not. As you can see, it was such a fun day, and we're back to the dock before lunch. Until next time, Red Rum Spearfishing, out.